I'm Wayne County Treasurer Eric Sabri. We are living through unprecedented times with a global pandemic now approaching its third year. As a result, the Michigan Homeowner Assistance Fund was created. This fund, administered by the state of Michigan, is designed to help homeowners cope with pandemic-related hardships, such as delinquent property taxes. See if you qualify. Please visit. Call 313-388-9799 or email taxinfo at waynecounty.com. We're here to help. Good morning. If you're looking for the weekly broadcast of the Ask Welfare Rights program, uh, you've been lucky. Uh, I'm here. My name is Maureen Taylor, and I work with Michigan Welfare Rights. Uh, Marion is still off for retirement slash vacation, so I'm uh, representing all of welfare rights today, and I want to first start off by saying to uh, my sister Shoshona Sh uh, Shakur, who her and her team took this uh, slot for us last Friday. Thank you very much. Uh, our engineer just said that uh, they were fantastic. We were, of course, out of town and not able to look at it at that time, but I'm so grateful that she and her team were able to be here and fill up this hour with a lot of good information. We're going to hope to do the same thing today. The call-in numbers, as usual, are listed at the bottom of the screen, 868-4336 or 868-0351 or 868-34, oh, I'm sorry, 868-0342. Uh, um, the uh, Ask Wel Welfare Rights broadcast is live on Fridays when we can make it live. And uh, for those of you that may be on the Internet, www tv33whpr.com. You can check us out on the Internet. And uh, the program is repeated several times uh, throughout the week. And uh, we're grateful to uh, the wonderful Mr. R.J. Watkins for airing the program multiple times so that information we hope that will be uh, helpful gets told over and over and over again, gets shared over and over and over again. All right, there are a couple of things we want to raise having to do with events of current affairs, okay? Uh, allergies, always allergies. One of those events is the following. I saw a message from the folks at MISHTA, which is the Michigan State Housing Development Authority. And they were asking for comments on their request to ask the federal government to fund them, that's MISHTA, that slash Section 8, to fund them for the next five years as they continue to work through low-income families and individuals who uh, could qualify for Section 8 certificates. Thank you so very much. Thank you, thank you. I'll hold on to this. Uh, my wonderful engineer heard me sniffling and brought me some tissue. Thank you. So I wrote a letter to uh, back to the Michigan State Housing Development Authority and explaining to them how welfare rights is not going to be in favor of them getting, the Section 8 folks getting not another dime with so many people who are already currently in possession of a Section 8 certificate or a Section 8 voucher, having so many problems with management companies, with uh, whoever the management company is that is uh, managing uh, the payments once a month to a landlord, <clears throat> payments once a month to a landlord that's not a good landlord, payments once a, once a month to a landlord that appears to be a slum landlord. And, and uh, Welfare Rights has encountered several of these landlord types over the last about two years now or more uh, that don't keep the property up, 
tenants are in there uh, uh, keeping it clean, keeping the kitchen and, and the front room and the dining room and the bedrooms up to par. But we've got uh, landlords that are counting on uh, uh, monthly checks from Lansing, no matter how horrible the, uh, their properties might be falling down. And I think sometimes what we found out is that it's not necessarily the property owner that's the one at fault. These community management companies uh, have a list of landlords, and they send or they unite or share information with some of these slum landlords about properties that are available and or residents who have been awarded a Section 8 certificate. And that family lives in ABC or 123 Main Street. And, and the railing, when they first got there, you have to pass all these inspections. Uh, uh, the railing uh, now is falling off the front porch. The uh, a structural part of the windows are now becoming uh, not uh, 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 um, in correct dimensions any longer for whatever reason lead paint chips on the window sills, uh, leaks in the basement in the auxiliary room. All of these things had been passed in an effort to uh, allow a family or an individual to move into a particular address. But what we've noticed is over a period of time, the landlords start to slack off and don't pay as much. And not all of them. Really, it's a small percentage of them. But don't... Um, Pay attention to the structural problems. Here comes mold in the basement. I got a call about that the other day. And the landlord said, well, there's nothing I can do about mold. Uh, it, it's natural, and it comes as a result of uh, flooding in the basement. And, and uh, the tenant didn't flood the basement, and the landlord says, neither did I. Uh, the city may be responsible, but there's nothing I can do about it. So keep paying your rent or else. So... We have a number of these kind of complaints. And uh, after I wrote to the folks in Lansing, don't consider making another multi-million dollar grant to Mishta until some of these properties and some of these community management folks are investigated a little bit more so we can weed out those management companies that are of funneling dollars to uh, slum landlords while they conduct something called virtual inspections. I didn't know what that was the first time I heard that. A virtual inspection means that the person who's supposed to conduct the inspection shows up with, uh, n not at the property, but at some distant location and has a camera or ha ask the uh, family, do you have a cell phone and point your cell phone toward uh, a light switch okay the light switch is on and the plate around the light switch seems to be intact so that passes so you know a virtual inspection means that the landlord doesn't have to be on the property that was quite a surprise to me and i witnessed it i watched it i was involved with a virtual inspection where the inspector was not on the property and asked uh, uh, the tenant to just show her phone to wall sockets and, and paint some of showing up toward the ceiling to see if there was anything that was leaking. So those kinds of things are very familiar to us. And what I want to ask is any viewers and or listeners over the next week or so, and today is Cinco de Mayo, 5-5, five, five. all right? We'll talk about that in a minute. But if you are aware of a Section 8 certificate or voucher holder, a family that has a Section 8 certificate that is having problems, if you yourself are a tenant in a Section 8 property and the folks in Lansing pay your rent or part of your rent every month and you are dissatisfied with your residence, because the landlord is not taking care of renovations, not taking care of uh, repairs, not taking care of updates or other structural problems, call us down at the Welfare Rights Office, 
964-0618. And the reason I'm asking you to call is because we want to get the background information. We want to get the details of what's going on in your residence so we can get the folks in Mishta and we are now connected, welfare rights is connected to people in Hood in Washington. We can force these slum landlords to pick up, to fix up, to make repairs, and you are not threatened with, you. we're going to throw you out because you keep complaining. So if you know or if you are such a person or family that's having problems with uh, a, uh, the, one of these community development offices, management offices, and HUD is involved, Mishta is involved, and your uh, dollars come uh, directly from Lansing. <clears throat> Call us at Welfare Rights, 313-964-0618. So we can interview you, get some information, and get some resources <clears throat> to you to correct the windows that won't close or the mold that's in the basement, or uh, uh, the dripping toilet, or the dripping faucet, so whatever it is that we can't get the landlord to fix. So call us at Welfare Rights, 313-964-0618. Caller, you've been very patient. Thank you for waiting, and thank you for calling Ask Welfare Rights. Caller, you on the air. Grand Rising, Grand Rising, Grand Rising. Well, Grand Rising, uh, Madam Wheeler, uh, good to hear your voice and uh, always look forward to a juicy report from <laughs> you about what's happening in Highland Park. So, uh, Madam Grand Rising, give us some information. What do we need to know? Before I do that, could you repeat, please, the uh, website for WHPR TV? The website is www three w's a dot tv thirty three w h p r dot com. Oh, there's no dot after that. No, uh, uh-uh. www. Then there's a dot tv thirty three w h p r dot com c o m. Right. What I'm doing, I had it always on my laptop, but with the ice storm, it kind of, for some reason, it took it off. Oh, okay, okay. So I was trying on my laptop again with that, but so far, I'm just seeing the same websites that won't let me go in. There's one for Ruco, and there's that streaming net, and uh, there's one for Fire Stick, but... Yeah, I have to just keep playing with this, okay? Okay, thank you, Madam Grand Rising. Uh, give us an update on Highland Park. What's going on yeah. in the park? Well, we know Mother's Day is approaching very soon. The mayor, Mayor McDonald, Glenda McDonald, Saturday, May 13th, a Mother's Day tea from 12 to 2 p.m. Mm. And that will be at the Ernest T. Ford Recreation Center, 10 Pinkett. Highland Park, Michigan. That's a Mother's Day tea, Saturday the 13th from 12 to 2 p.m. at the Ernest T. Ford Center. All righty. So that's Saturday, the day before Mother's Day. Yes. Okay. And, and that's at the Rick Center. At what time again? 12 to 2. 12 to 2. All righty. Mother's Day tea. All righty. I hear you. Sounds very nice. Got this also, the mayor's coffee and conversations every second Wednesday, starting May the 10th, coffee and conversations with our mayor, Glenda McDonald, every second Wednesday, starting May the 10th, at Dunkin' Donuts here in beautiful Highland Park, that's 15109 Woodward Avenue, 10 a.m. till 5 p.m. That's a long duration. That's a long conversation. We got a mayor who can do it. That's a long conversation now. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Now, here's another. It's the fire department versus Highland Park. Fire and police department versus HP Highland Park. And that'll be May the 26th, 1 p.m. It's a big game tournament. Now, now, and what is the sport? What is the sport that's going to be highlighted on that day? Basketball. Basketball. So uh, the Highland Park Fire Department 
is uh, going to uh, go up against Highland Park residents in a, a public um, basketball game. That's the police and the fire department. Oh, First okay. Now, now, are they going to be on opposite sides or are they going to be on the same side? They're together versus HP. The, the Popo and the firefighters are versing HP, Highland Park. Okay, well, I'm glad to hear that because I was trying to think Highland Park Fire Department only has three and a half firemen there, and the no, Water Department has got four and a half. And I was thinking, mm -hmm. you got to try to blend them together if you're going to get a full team. <laughs> <laughs> Say what you want to. We just had a fire last week. Oh, and not Highland good. Park not fire good. Department showed up. What was unfortunate, but was also fortunate, too, a beautiful blonde brick house on my street caught on fire, an electrical fire. Oh, the, boy. The residents happened to be out of town. That's, that's, I, I know you spoke about that to me, and that's, that's just mm -hmm. so awful. By the yeah. time the family gets back home, they come back yeah. to a burnt-out shell and all of their mm -hmm. belongings are no longer available. That's so sad. But you I heard do the first know floor was completely gone. It fell right into the basement. Oh, boy, boy, boy. That's, that's tough where stuff they there. That's located. The fire started in yeah. the basement, an electrical fire, yeah. Well, I know I sent a, a name over to you of someone else who mm -hmm. uh, uh, lost their property in Highland Park and looking for and needed some individual hands-on yeah. assistance and wanted to relocate, but only in Highland Park. Only in Highland loyalty, Park. She loyalty, loyalty. I Park. want to stay There's in so Highland Park. There's so many people that love Highland Park. Yeah. You know, we've got so much to give. Yes, yes, yes. All right, all right. I hear that news. Uh, I've been seeing some things on TV about uh, uh, the water department. Yeah, and, and issues going on there, uh, uh, and, and it seems like uh, things may be uh, unraveling and moving in a, a positive direction. At least I hope. <laughs> yeah, you said it would. You did say that. You told me that just a couple of days ago, before what? it was even announced. The Senate, um, a few weeks from now or days from now, whenever they vote, will vote on the budget. Uh, including for the state, which I heard the budget is something like $400 billion for the state, including Highland Park for $20 million. So when that vote is approved, we will receive $20 million around October. Yes, and, and $20 million to be used for what? For the debt, the, 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 the unscrupulous lies and uh, unregulated uh, uh, service from Great Lakes Water Authority. All right, so it sounds out. Uh, sounds like they're about to be paid off, and Highland Park is uh, officially out of debt. Well, they really won't. This our first debt is twenty four million, and the second debt that they lied and they said we are th thirty five million. So there's twenty, you know. And I'm not being ungrateful. I'm not looking at the cup uh, half empty, but it's a drop in the bucket. Okay. Understood, understood. Mm -hmm. And where's that? Where there is one drop, uh, perhaps we can go back and look in that bucket and see if there's a second drop. There you go. There you go. Now I'm sure that some of the uh, surrounding communities that may be in trouble with their delinquent water bills are going to be mm -hmm. saying, "Oh, who's going to help us?" But uh, mm -hmm. the message is, is that once these low-income communities get to that point. Populations are, are, de uh, are decreasing. Uh, mm -hmm. The resources are just not yeah. there. It's going to take federal and state That's assistance right. to get people out of those kinds of circumstances. So you can't have a conversation about saving uh, the New Republic Bank or mm. the Citizens Bank who spent mm. millions of dollars on junkets back and forth to Hawaii. What about Wall Street? You what know, about the Big Four? Well, uh, 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 in the last three or four months, we've bailed out about four banks. And, yeah. and the banks, the reason they needed, quote, quote, bailing out is because the president of the bank uh, yeah. uh, uh, wrote uh, predatory loans and <laughs> took trips to uh, uh, the Middle East and mm -hmm. all this other kind of stuff. So if they could be bailed out and assisted right. whatnot during the three years that we've suffered with COVID, so can mm -hmm. little old Highland Park. So can mm -hmm. little old Sterling Heights. So can little yeah. old, uh, uh, what's the name of that Inkster. city? Roy Inkster. Royal Oak Township. Ham all Tramit. of that. So we have to help everybody that suffered. And we should start that assistance 
with those that are at the low income bracket first. But especially though, we may be low income bracket, but we pay our bills. Yes. Ninety percent of the residents in Highland Park pay their water bill. I believe that, and I know that to be true. Others mm-hmm. are telling lies, talking about uh, we have to pay more money for water because the people in Highland Park are lazy and won't That's pay theirs. And that was never true. That's a lie. We paid seven times more than any other city in Michigan. I believe that. The meters are unregulated, especially that sewer meter. There are no, there are no meet, excuse me, there's no meters on the sewers. So they just flip a coin and say, we'll charge Highland Park this time, this much today. Yeah, it's the truth. And what you're talking about is absolutely accurate. So, yeah, so that news is good. And if we can get good news on a Monday, maybe we can get good news next Monday also. Well, Monday, I do understand that uh, it's the mediation talks with uh, Evil Gleema. I uh, don't know how that's turning out, but I do know our mayor, McDonald, Glenda McDonald, has called a state of emergency. Yes, I saw that. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. saw that. All right, so she's staying on top of this. Yes, she is. Okay. Yes, she is. Okay. She's staying on top of it. She loves Highland Park, just like we all Highland Park is here. We love Highland Park. We've got Highland Parkers that move, still love, still consider themselves a Parker for life. We consider you a Parker for life, too, Maureen, the way you always come into our aid. Uh, whenever I'm called, and even if I'm not called, I'm always in support. All right. Yes, you are. All right. Well, now, uh, Madam week. Grand Rising, you know day. this is a Friday. Police week. That's May the 15th, 2023, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Fun, games, good food. Great Fellowship, Multiple Agency Police Ride. So I'm just wondering, are they going to ride you in the police car? Well, I don't know about that. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Now That'll tell me Pahana again. Park police Department. When that's does that start? What two. time? Uh, that's uh, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. May the 15th on a Monday. Got it. Got it. And the address for the police department, 13233 Hamilton. That's 13233 Hamilton. May the 15th, Monday, Police Week Community Day, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Fun games, good food, great fellowship, and multiple agency police ride. I don't know what that part means, but okay, take- I don't need to ride no police car, you know, well, even if it is for fun. I know. It depends on the status. If you're in the police car in the back seat and, and your <laughs> hands are behind your back, it may not be all that exciting. <laughs> See? Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. I love it. I love it. Oh, here's, here's something else, too. Walk the city with Mayor McDonald. That's May the 6th, which is tomorrow, That's tomorrow. 11 a.m. Meet at City Hall at 12050 Woodward Avenue. Destination will be the Highland Park Fire Department. So you can walk and talk with our mayor, Mayor Belinda McDonald. That's tomorrow, Saturday, 11 a.m. Meet at our beautiful City Hall at 120. 50 Woodward Avenue. And the destination is the Highland Park fire department which is only about maybe hmm, 10 blocks away is it, it i was gonna say about eight eight to eight or nine blocks okay See, you, uh, that's I know, a good you little thought, i know because i know we're 2.9 square i know i know all right well don't you all meet on thursdays at the block club at the fire station we did last night yes we did okay and uh is there anything significant that you need to share with us about that sure. meeting, you know our black club is is is, is ready for it. Uh, we're we're getting ready for the Michigan Week Parade, which is on a Saturday, May twentieth, twelve p.m., starting at Tuxedo mm-hmm. and Hamilton, and then ending up in the field over there at the Ernest T. Ford Field House at uh, Ten Pinkin. Okay. So we're going to be in the week. parade. We've got our trucks and cars. Uh, we had a good parade angel. She made the uh, flowers that we're going to put on our cars out of tissue paper. Blue, white, yellow, red. They're so pretty. 
All right, Michigan Week celebration. Okay. That's right. All right, now, Madam uh, Grand Rising, this is Friday, so you know you have to give us a uh, a, a report uh, about getting a vaccine. Oh yeah. All right. You know, I just heard a new variant is out, and it's called. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Orturi, or Orturo, or something like that. Okay. Um, the symptoms are red eye, pink eye, pink eye. That's the symptoms. Pink eye with a white discharge and blurry vision. Wow. Um, it's about ten percent has been hit in the United States thus far. And I heard this just uh, four days ago. So I'm sure the numbers Maybe grow. more by now. Mm-hmm. My goodness. Okay, now is that a condition that is treatable? Do you know anything about it? I haven't they heard have, about this variant it, yet. It was, you know, what the treatment is. Okay. I guess you'd have to follow up with your doctor. I just heard about this new variant, you know. Okay. I don't know if this is COVID-24 uh, or 25, but this is a new covid a new variant, okay, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. Well, all right, so, uh, Madam. Go, your, go ahead to get your boosters, to get your vaccine, to get your uh, COVID test. You know where to go. I'm going to say it again. Please walk, run, crawl, Uber, Uber to the Ernest T. Ford Fieldhouse, Ten Pinkett, and you can get all of that today. This is Friday. They're open up now until 3 p.m. to get your Johnson and Johnson's Moderna. And uh, there's another vaccine. What is what? You know, have to know the name of. Oh, Pfizer. 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 Uh huh. Yeah. And Johnson and Johnson. Johnson and Johnson and Medina. You can get all of those uh, uh, vaccine uh, uh, medicine, or you can get your boosters, and you can get your COVID testing free. I'm going to say the word again: F R E E free. Can't beat that. Okay. Well, Madam Grand Rising, that sounds like a very full report. Uh, looks okay. like you and the residents of Highland Park have been jumping all over the place, uh, all mm-hmm. kinds of things that are happening. And I want to say thank you again for a very full and detailed uh, Highland Park report. Uh, Lord is willing and the creek don't rise next Friday. Uh, I'll be here to listen to any updates you care to share. The Lord is willing and the creek don't rise with me too, Maureen. I will be here to share the Highland Park update news. Thank you, ma'am, and have a quiet and uneventful afternoon. Uh, well, I hope the event is something like uh, uh, Mega Millions or Powerball at the Wheeler House. <laughs> Sounds right to me. Uh, uh, what they say, let it be so. That's right. All right, dear. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All Love right. You. Mm-hmm. Love you back. Take care. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. All right. 868 All right. Got some very exciting news uh, a couple of days ago. There are a lot of people that applied for Sarah funds. And that's the COVID emergency relief assistance. And it was very prominent in 20, I want to say 21. And it finally came out, federal dollars went to the state, and the state created the Sarah program. And it helped you with 12 months' worth of back rent, or at least they could go back that far, and three months in advance. So a number of people filled out applications for Sarah, uh, for Sarah help with the light bill, a gas bill, a water bill, uh, 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 property taxes, and rent. And a ton of folks received assistance. However, there was a small population of people that did sign up for Sarah assistance, and for whatever reason, they couldn't make the right connections, and the help never arrived. Well, I got a call just the other day from a, a organizer in uh, the uh, the commissioner's office, who asked me if I was aware of people who had signed up for Sarah, but the resources never got to them. Uh, those resources are available now. Wow. All right, now the criteria is you have to have filed for Sarah already. 
So it can't be a new filing. So if you know someone that has filled out the application for CERA funds, and that's COVID Emergency Relief Assistance, C-E-R-A. If you know someone that has signed up for CERA assistance, and as far as you know, or yourself, you didn't get any assistance for a number of reasons, call down to the Welfare Rights Office, 313 913- Nine six four zero six one eight three one three nine six four zero six one eight. Call and leave your name and a contact number, and say that you, if we're nobody, if it's nobody there, call and say I'm calling about more information about the Sarah program that I applied to but never got resources. So I'll understand and. The rest of us will understand what the call is about. 313-964-0618. COVID dollars from the SARA program are now being made available. Again, this is such a, a lucky moment, lucky moment. All right, uh, I wanted to say that DTE bills. Now, I saw a demonstration on TV just the other day when folks going down to the DTE headquarters and complaining about DTE bills being too high, and they were absolutely correct. They were complaining about DTE service being off during a winter or a windstorm for a week or two days and a week or three days and a week, and uh, uh, absolutely scandalous, and they were absolutely correct. Let me say to you again, if you have a DTE bill that says past due, or uh, 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 about to be in shutoff status, call us at Welfare Rights so we can unwind this situation. 313-964-0618. 313-964-0618. Call us at Welfare Rights. Leave a message if there's nobody there, okay? And the message should say, uh, uh, I'm involved with a DTE bill that is overdue or my service is off or threatened to be off, and I need to speak to someone about my uh, balance that's still old. So call us down at DTE. Water Department has increased the amount of, quote, unquote, ration water, and it's almost at an, at a, uh, an amount where people don't have to suffer or be threatened with water shutoffs. Already, you have to call to get on the Lifeline program. We cannot protect you unless you are signed up. Let me write that down. Unless you are signed up for the Lifeline program. So you have to call 267 8000. 267 8000. Call that number and tell whoever answers the phone that you're trying to sign up for the Lifeline program. You have to get on it. And what it'll do is uh, there are three payment areas. If you're low, low income, uh, you can pay as little as $18 a month toward a water bill. If you're, on the, uh, if you're on the program and you sign up for it, that means you're protected from water shutoff, and, and we don't want that to happen. The second payment amount is $43 a month, Okay, and the last payment amount, I think, is $57. I didn't bring the, the uh, um, uh, flyer, but it's $57 a month, I do believe. And as long as you're staying on that program, it will address arrearage bills, balances, and current bills. Stay on it, stay on it, stay on it. And at the end of a year, if we have to get you to the welfare department, who will make a balloon payment to catch you up, we are able to do that. And I don't know if that's the policy of the water department. So, all right, um, that's that. Okay, um, there is uh, a incident that happened on a New York subway just the other day. A 24-year-old Anglo-American former Marine, or well, he might be current Marine, but he's uh, uh, in the Marine Corps was on the subway in New York, and an African-American man was acting up. You know, I don't care. I don't care about my life. I'm hungry. 
I don't feel good, you know, causing a bit of a creation. And most of the folks in New York see this kind of thing. They just pick up their cell phone and, you know, go to the next car. All right. But this guy, apparently he was persistent in talking about how tired he was and how his life is not good. Well, what ended up happening is this white fella grabbed him uh, and uh, 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 put him in a headlock from behind, and they both fell. And while the, uh, 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 the person who is uh, having this episode, his hands are raised because he's trying to get this other fella's arm around his neck, two more people grabbed him, the one that was on the ground um, uh, challenging folks, and put his harm, arms down so he couldn't free his neck. Now, if you haven't heard about this story, it's, it's very interesting. Say, uh, the young Marine, 24 years of age, great big forearms, he got him from the back. He choked him until the young man died, okay? The guy is in his 30s. I believe they said he was in his early 30s. Autistic, not art, autistic depression apparently the young man's mother was shot and killed uh, uh when he was 16 and he's been dealing with depression off and on since then a manic depressant and hungry and uh, uh poor and low income oh pay that no mind so all of that is going on and the man died now the marine that uh, put him in the chokehold used the phrase that we hear all the time. The other two fellas said the same thing. I was concerned because I was fearing for my life. Well, you know, we hear that all the time. However, the coroner has issued a, a statement that says the cause of death for this young homeless man, the cause of death is homicide. Okay? So it's not a lot you can do uh, 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 when the coroner says that somebody was murdered. Now, the Marine was interviewed, and they let him go. All right, so he interviewed, what's your name, what's your address, where do you live, what happened, got his side of the story and whatnot, and he was released. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean anything because I've noticed over the years the police may interview, get your name, your whereabouts, your, uh, uh, your ID, uh, uh, where you live and let you go and then at a later point come back and pick you up and that would be because at the, be, at the very beginning of an altercation or an incident uh, there's not a lot of evidence there. Uh, in this particular case this is going to turn into something that's really really difficult to deal with because as far as I can tell and what attorneys have been talking about across the country who are commenting on this story. You don't have the right to choke a person who's causing a disturbance. You can um, interrupt their behavior, save yourself, maybe save others, but you can't kill anybody. So if you took a gun and shot it at this guy, and, and well, why'd you do that? Well, he was talking loud and acting uh, aggressive. Uh, you can't do that. So to choke this black man and to hold the other guys holding his hands down so he couldn't get free, you know, uh, it, 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 this is an assault. This is absolutely an assault. And according to um, comments being made, this trained Marine had multiple other things that he could have done in an effort to stop this aggressive behavior. Uh, of course, the young black man had no weapons. The people that were holding and choking him, they didn't know that. But he had no weapons and was not saying, I'm going to kill you or stab you or hurt you. Didn't say that. Apparently, he was talking about, I'm tired and I'm hungry and nobody will help me. And, and giving those kinds of statements as he was walking back and forth and probably being loud and whatnot and causing a disturbance. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen on this case, but it's more and more toward 
the Trayvon Martin situation. Uh, uh, I feared for my life, so I had to do something. And here's this trained Marine put a guy in a headlock until he not just passed out, but he died. So he cut off that airway, and the other two people that was there holding uh, uh, the uh, man's arms, uh, I guess they interviewed them all. And now we're going to see what, what, what's going to happen. What, what, what are your rights? If you happen to be at the Detroit bus stop, and a person walks up to you that it seems to be going through a mental crisis and saying to you, I'm tired, I'm hungry, I don't care if I live or die, I don't get enough help, nobody's there to help me, and I'm worried and I'm afraid and I'm angry. Well, you might want to walk away from that person, or if you decide to do something else, do your efforts matter? Do your efforts matter? And in this particular case, a person died. Now, here comes the facts. Autistic, not medicated, depressed. All of this is going on, and now he's dead and at the hands of three white men. So this is going to be an issue. This is going to be an issue. I wanted to bring it up to make certain that if you haven't seen the case, you should look at it. All right, a couple more things I want to say. I'm tired. And the reason I'm tired is because at 3.30 this morning, uh, my son called me, and he was at Henry Ford Hospital. And I said, well, okay, I'm dressed and I'm on my way. And uh, the reason I was halfway dressed and on my way is because several hours before that, I was in the hospital, and my daughter... Uh, Miss Bernice, daughter-in-law, uh, was uh, in labor. Well, at 3.30 this morning, uh, this little girl, she said, I, ca I, I can't find my way out. I need some help. I can't find my way out. So they got her together, and she was born, Miss Zoe. Her name is Z-O-H. Miss Zoe was born about 3.45 this morning. She's a little girl, 7 pounds, uh, uh, 10 ounces, 7 pounds, 10 ounces, and she's 20 and a half inches long. Uh, by the time uh, I got that message and got down to the hospital about 4.30, quarter of 5, had to wait because it's a change of shifts. And uh, I sat there and, of course, you know, falling asleep, arm falling off the, the, the armrest, falling, uh, falling off the armrest. And finally, after about 45 minutes, when the one staff had uh, left and the other staff came on, uh, I went around to the intensive care. She's uh, got a little bit of an infection, but by the time I get back down there again today, uh, she ought to be doing the Tootsie Roll by the time I get there. So, uh, 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 Tim, did you hear that? Zoe showed up. Z Zoe is here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, I got a chance to see her twice and, uh, uh, went there and, uh, grabbed her little hand. I mean, my eyes, my heart was just so full. My eyes were full of tears. My heart just full of joy. And, uh, uh, uh grabbed her little hand and she gripped my finger. So I thought, well, I guess you got to hold on me for the next however many years the Lord will let me hang out. So Miss Zoe is born. Uh, uh, I'm going to go back to the hospital a couple of hours from now. I'm going to go to work for a little while, and later on I'm going to hang out with Miss Zoe. Now, uh, uh, the reason I bring it up is because that's why I'm sleepy. I've been up since 3.35, and I know, <clears throat> And, and hanging around and waiting for Zoe to show up, and she finally did. So if I keep rubbing my eyes and, 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 and my elbows keep falling off the chair, uh, that would be why that is. All right, one more thing I'm going to raise for today. June 10th. Now, June 19th is something different, but 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. June 10th is on a Saturday. The People's Water Board, the National, what is it, National Defense 
Resources Coalition. I don't know, somebody's trying to call me and I'm on the air, so I'm not going to answer that right now. So, uh, 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 that group, uh, Welfare Rights, and a number of other uh, um, subject matter experts, we've been working together for about four or five years and trying to pull together this documentary under the award-winning producer, Kate Levy. And uh, Miss Levy uh, uh just an outstanding young woman. She has gotten this thing together. And the documentary is done. I advertised it here at this station several months ago. And it's called Whose Water? All right, Whose Water? The People's Movement for Affordable and Clean Water. And uh, on that day, it's going to officially premiere in this in the state of Michigan in Detroit the premiere is going to be in the afternoon four o'clock sparkling uh, fellowship five o'clock the documentary is shown we'll be at Wayne County Community College Northwest District Wayne County Community College Northwest District and uh, there is an admission it's five dollars if you get your ticket in advance ten dollars at the door we're gonna cut it off at 550 people and the re that's the reason that we have to do that is because we have invited not only residents of detroit and highland park and amtramic certainly residents of uh, wayne county certainly people that live in michigan certainly people that have been involved in these water fights from a car from across the country but we've we've also uh, as some notables who are involved in the struggle to access clean and affordable water, like in Flint, like in Pontiac, and you know the things that happened there. Here's Highland Park embroiled in this struggle with the uh, Great Lakes uh, um, uh, Water Authority, the pirates over there at Gliwa, pirates, that's all they are. Uh, you all owe us X amount of millions of dollars, and, and why do we owe you that? Well, because we say so. Uh, all right, so folks that are involved in that and notables like uh, Judge uh, Greg Mathis, we have invited him to join us. We've got a VIP section, so we've asked Greg Mathis to join us. Uh, actor uh, 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 Mark Ruffalo who is very involved in environmental activities. We've uh, invited him to uh, be our guest. Uh, who else? Uh, Judge Russell Honoré. Uh, Judge Honoré is the uh, retired general now who came out of that helicopter during the Katrina crisis and landed in a body of water and started screaming at those National Guards people, put those GD guns down. You're aiming guns. These are American people. And uh, those National Guards persons uh, had their guns trained on African Americans that were trying to go across the bridge out of New Orleans and escape the flooding and uh, the misery that was going on at Katrina. And these uh, white National Guardsmen were not letting them get through. So it was Russell I Honoré that broke all that up, opened up all those ways so that people could go to family and friends and uh, take care of themselves and, in many instances, save their lives. It was General, a retired general now, Russell Honoré, H-O-N-O-R-E apostrophe, that we've invited. He's already accepted. All right, and who else? We've got uh, Snoop Dogg. We sent the dog. Uh, an invitation. His agent has been in contact with the office trying to work out arrangements because Snoop Dogg has been very, very supportive and helpful in bringing cases and cases and cases of water to folks in Flint. And most of you already know that that's the case. So uh, uh, who else? Uh, Michael Eric Dyson has been invited to participate uh, and to sit in the VIP section. Uh, Dr. Cornell West has been invited to sit at that section. Uh, Bishop William Barber, already the uh, civil rights voice of low-income people, has been invited. Uh, we're working through his agents to find out if we can uh, uh, work out the uh, time and the distance 
so he can come and see us. Thank you. So he can come and see us. And uh, there, I think, they, oh, uh, uh, Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, we sent her an invitation. Matter of fact, I'm trying to drop one off at her um, Detroit office today and just found out that the office she had over on 2nd is closed. So she's got another office. After I leave the broadcast today, I'm going to go there and drop off a physical invitation. We've already mailed it to her uh, congressional address in D.C. And uh, we haven't done this yet. All right, and again, we're talking about June 10th. We're talking about sending out an invitation to members of the squad. You know, that's Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan, uh, Omar, uh, uh, from uh, w Wisconsin, they threw her out of uh, all of her assignments. Uh, uh, oh, Lord, what is the child? Uh, um, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez out of New York, who has already condemned the murder of this black man on the subway. And uh, the other lady is in Pennsylvania. What is her name? I can't think of it right now. Wait a minute, came back. No, it went away. It'll come back to me. She's the one that's got the alopecia, and her hair started to fall off. She is so beautiful, but she is so smart, and she's a congresswoman, and she's the fourth one in the squad. Matter of fact, I'll look it up right now. I can look it up on my phone. But uh, 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 we're talking about asking some of uh, those other three ladies. Uh, Rashida Tlaib has been hellfire on environmental activities. So she's been out front on this for a while. All righty. Uh, somebody's calling me. Somebody else is calling me. Oh, okay. Um, uh, uh, my phone is full of congratulations where people are hearing the news about uh, my new little grandbaby who just was born. So I'm getting all of that information. And that's the same call. All right, I'm going to have to call that one later and put that over here. All right, so the issue here is that there's so many things. I've listed several things today. Problems with DTE tell you how to fix it. You have to file the state emergency relief application first, or the SARA folks that never got any assistance, they're going to be able to get some assistance now. Uh, call us at Welfare Rights, and we'll give you some more details about some of these things that may be happening, and maybe you didn't get all of the information. Uh, caller, uh, we're just about out of time, but I see and I recognize this number. Uh, caller, you are on the air. Uh, I didn't want anything. just wanted to call and say good morning. And good I'm morning to you, too. Long-time listener of the show. And I uh, haven't been able to tune in for a while. And today my grandbaby said, uh, or excuse me, my daughter said, I want to watch my grandma. All right. So we uh, are down here at the hospital hanging out, waiting on you to get off the radio show to come back down. Uh, okay. Now, is the baby still in, in uh, ICU or uh, did they bring the baby to the room yet? Nope. She's still down there, but uh, she might come down and join mom and dad for a late lunch. That's what we were told. So. Oh, boy, boy, boy. Well, all right, as soon as I leave the station, got to stop by Central right quick, and then I'm coming on to hang out with Miss <laughs> Zoe. Tell her uh, uh, grandma uh, is on the way. Okay, very good, grandma. Very good. Thank you so very much. And what a beautiful baby you have, my son. Oh, well, thank you. All right, I'll see you soon. All right. All yeah. right, very good. All right. So uh, we've done baby news, told you about Lifeline 267-8000, uh, told you about uh, some information happening in Highland Park where it looks like at least one of your debts is about to be settled, said something to folks that uh, uh, signed up for Sarah that they are now eligible for assistance if they signed up and did not get assistance in the past, they're eligible. We talked about uh, the movie June 10th. Uh, uh, I'm going to uh, get with the station in the next four or five days, and we're going to put the ad on WHPR so people can see how to get a seat. We're inviting churches, uh, a table. Uh, we're inviting individuals. We're inviting sororities and fraternities, uh, water activist groups, uh, uh, the uh, street conveyor groups. 
uh, all invited, uh, and uh, 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 we want you to see this is a fantastic endeavor that talks about and tracks the work that has been done to maintain access to affordable uh, uh, water, clean water, and sanitation. So that's June the 10th. There are lots of things that are going on in and around the city of Detroit. Uh, I urge you, find something positive to do. And I left this on the uh, uh, table here for a reason. I don't know why people are worried and still apprehensive about wearing a mask. There is a new bar variant. Uh, Grand Rising spoke about it earlier today. There's something going on in the Marcus Garvey School and a second school where little ones are getting some kind of upper respiratory something. Wear the mask. If you don't have any more, call Welfare Rights. We've got several cases left, and we will give you a box of masks because you're going to need them. There is a new variant that has struck the area, and you're going to need a mask to manage this. So we'll ask you, if you need uh, a mask, call us at Welfare Rights. Leave your name and number if there's no one there, and we'll give you a box of masks. They are free. All right. Uh, my name is Maureen Taylor, and I am a new grandmother. And I'm going to leave here in a few more minutes and go and look at this little girl. She, uh, she's got my hair. She looks just like my head. She does. All right. So I'm going to go there and hang out with her for a little while. And uh, if the Lord is willing and the creek don't rise, uh, Marion and I, or at least me, I'll be back here next Friday. Uh, be safe. Be good. You drivers that are driving on top of people, slow down. Slow down. And I'll see you next Friday. Goodbye. I'm Wayne County Treasurer Eric Sabree. We are living through unprecedented times with a global pandemic now approaching its third year. As a result, the Michigan Homeowner Assistance Fund was created. This fund, administered by the state of Michigan, is designed to help homeowners cope with pandemic-related hardships, such as delinquent property taxes. See if you qualify. Please visit. Call 313-388-9799 or email taxinfo at waynecounty.com. We're here to help.